it's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for Craig and Ryland's Magic Movie Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. Did you forget for a minute? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you did. Yeah, and welcome back to the review show. We've got four really interesting products lined up for you today, uh, including a new Alakazam trick. Yeah. Very excited. A new app that's just come out that is absolutely phenomenal. A download and a trick. So we've got a really eclectic range of stuff. Uh, we're going to start right off uh, with a brand new download that's come out recently through Penguin Magic. Let's have a look. So first up, we have a download. Uh, I saw it on Penguin Magic. I think it's exclusive to Penguin Magic. It's by a guy called Joseph B. And it's called The A Can That Can't Be Explained. Now, you performed a Joseph B download ages ago on this review show. Remember when you had that little magician fooling card trick? that you learned so as a download and it was like oh this is going to fool magicians and it was loads of dealing and stuff and i said you're yeah. never going to do it yeah and i, and I just forgot about yeah you don't even know how to do the trick anymore do you because you've forgotten about it right well it's by the same guy but this is kind of interesting it's kind of interesting it's an a can and you know i love a cans so i'm going to perform it for you first of all and then we're going to talk about what we think about it okay yeah okay so let's perform it first of all so Okay, Ryland, so I've got a red deck and i've got a blue deck i'll tell you right now there's a prediction right there in the blue deck of cards okay okay and I've got this red deck. Now it's really important that you can see that all the cards are there and all the cards are different. Is that fair? Yeah. Now you can have any one of these cards. I'm going to tell you right now that this trick, before you pick a card, this trick is called a can, which stands for any card at any number. So you're going to pick a card and then whatever the card is, we're going to look at the value of that card and times it by two. And that's going to give us our number. Okay? Yeah. So you're going to times it by two. So which card would you like? Uh, Just touch one. That one there? Are you sure? Yeah. So that's a jack. Now, what's the value of jack? Uh, 13. 13. So 13 times... Two. No, it's not. It's 11. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking vacuum. <laughs> so what's 11 by 2? 22. 22. So we've got a random number, 22. We've got a random card, jack of diamonds. Is that fair? Yes. Yeah. Now, check this out, because this is really weird. This deck's been here the whole time. I haven't touched it. I'm going to deal down to the 22nd card. Look, 1, 2... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, right there. And the card at the twenty-second position is the Jack of Diamonds. There you go, that's the trick. Okay, so that is uh, the A Can That Can't Be Explained by Joseph B. Now, you haven't seen this because he's had a very busy week at school. And it's been your birthday this week as well. So you've had a very busy week at school. So you didn't get a chance to watch this beforehand. So you've not seen this before. What do you think of it? Good. You like it? Yeah, but what, what, why ask me to times it by two? I'm so glad you said that. Because that's stupid. <laughs> it, it is a bit stupid. Here's the thing. I have two issues with this trick. And stick around, because I think I've solved both of the issues. But I have two issues with this trick. And the first issue that I have is it uses two decks of cards. I, I, you know, I don't see why it needs to use... Well, I do, but it's a problem that you need to use two decks of cards. You know, you've got this prediction deck, you've got this deck. The only purpose of this deck is to have them pick a card. And then I thought, well, it doesn't actually need two decks of cards. You could just have one deck and have them name a card. But the problem with having them name a card is that is an incredibly fair way of having a card picked. Having, having a card picked by just having it named is an incredibly fair way of having a card picked. If you then say, well, to find the value, we're going to multiply the value. We're going to, to find the number, we're going to multiply the value of your card by two. Suddenly it becomes very limiting because it's gone from so fair to so dirty. So I think that's why the deck's in play to make the selection of the playing card less fair. So my first problem is that there's two decks of cards. And the second problem is, as you said correctly, and I'm so glad you said that, the problem is, it's just a bit stupid. You said the word stupid, you're right. It's a bit stupid. Why would you have somebody, it doesn't make any sense. Now, why would you go, hey, I'm gonna times the uh, value of the card by two and that will give us them. It's, it's just ridiculous. Any layman that watches that they're going to realise that that's got something to do with the method. Because if they really could go for a random number, why are you limiting them by having it multiply it by two? It just doesn't make any sense at all. And if this trick is being performed the way it's taught on the download, which is this, this is how it's taught, um, 
If it's taught this way, I can't see how this fools magicians. You know, it's been marketed as a magician fooler and it's been marketed as, oh, the trick that no one can explain. It's very easy to explain it, really, when you actually think about it. I mean, you might not realise how the method works, but you know that that multiplying by two thing takes it from, you know, what could be, you know, ACAN is meant to be impossible. It's meant to be this impossible feat. It's meant to be the holy grail of magicians. You name a card, you name a number, you don't touch the deck, and it's in that position. It's incredible. If you then suddenly start going, well, actually, you know, would the, let me ask you a question. Would ACAN be as, be as you know, it, it's the trick that every magician talks about. Would it be as renowned if the first time it was performed by Burgos, he went, uh, name a card. Now, uh, take the value of that card, times it by two. Very good. That's your, that's your position in the deck. Count that. It wouldn't, would it? It, it wouldn't be talked about all these years later. It's not that great. It's not that great. I don't see many people doing it. However, with all that said, you just said that you liked it and you thought it was very good. Come forward a bit. You actually liked that and you thought it was good. And I agree, I actually do like the concept of this. And I think I've worked out a solution. So I'm not going to expose how the trick works. You're going to buy the download for that. But for anybody who has got the download, let me explain how I'm, uh, how I'm doing this now. And I tried this on a Zoom show and it worked really, really well. First of all, we're going to get rid of the regular deck of cards. It's going to be gone. Now, I can't explain how this works. But obviously, from the presentation you just saw, you have to be aware that you have to multiply the card by two. You have to multiply the value of the card by two. Now, it's very limiting. My solution to this, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you. So this is, my, this is my solution. I've got a Shogun wallet here, but you could, it's the only thing I could grab quickly. Any wallet would work. What I've done, and Sarah, could you bring the camera a little bit closer, please, so they can see what's going on here? So let me explain what I've done here. I've took myself four blank face cards. And what I've done is I've put on each one of them one to four Clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. So that's chased. Clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. And then I did hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs. Then I did spades, diamonds, clubs, hearts. And I finished off with diamonds, clubs, hearts, spades. So that position number two has all four suits in it. So what you do is you take yourself a wallet and you put this in chased order. So if you were using a Shogun wallet, you would put uh, maybe two this side and you would put to this side, okay? So what you have in there is you have all of your cards, like I just prepped for you. That's in your Shogun wallet. Now we're only gonna use one deck of cards. And what, I'll present it for you. I'm gonna perform it again using, using what I suggest would be a better method. And I think it makes it a little bit more of an improvement. The only problem is, um, if you know how the trick works, you're not going to be able to have this card in there, the card that says multiply the value of the card by two. You're not going to be able to have that in there. So instead, I'm just going to be using a gag, which is your card, you know, a, a, a gag. So th this will all make sense right now. So let me show you. I'll do a performance for you and I'll show you what I'm doing with this now. So let's perform the trick again. Rylan, come here. I've got a deck of cards here. Yeah? yeah. Come forward, come forward, come forward. I've got a deck of playing cards here, yeah? Yeah. Um, I will tell you right now, that deck of cards is set up for an amazing prediction, okay? Now, there's a trick in magic called any card at any number. The idea is that you name any card, you name any number, and the card appears at that number. Now, the only problem with that trick is there's certain cards that people name more than others. A queen of hearts is always very popular. An ace of spades is very popular. And there's certain numbers that people name as well. If I asked you to name a number, say, from 1 to 52, a lot of people name 37. That's just the number that comes up an awful lot. So we're going to make it completely random using you and mommy. OK, first of all, we're going to have a card named, but you're going to name the value yeah. and mommy is going to name the suit. And then we're going to use that card that you two come up with together to work out a value. And here's how it's going to work. You know that cards have different values. Ace is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Jack is 11. Queen is 12. King is 13. A lot of people don't realise that the suits have values as well. Unless you're actually into playing cards, you wouldn't realise this. But the suits have values as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take whatever card you name. We're going to take the value of that. And we're going to multiply it by the value of the suit that mom name, names, okay? And that'll give us a completely random number. And just, in, just so you know, I've actually got in my wallet 
what each suit is, what numerical value is of each suit. Okay, just so you know, I'm not cheating. So we'll start with naming a card. Ryland, there's 13 values. Which which card would you like? Um, 12. 12. So you want the queen? Because no. 12 is... No, 30. name a... 13. So you want a king? Yeah. You sure you want a king? Yeah. So you want the king, which is a value 13, you're correct. And uh, mummy, would you like a club, heart, spade or a diamond? Diamonds. You want diamonds. King Girl. of diamonds. Girl's best friend. So we have got the king of diamonds. Now I did say inside my wallet, I have the um, uh, value of all of the cards. So diamonds is number two. You okay. see that? So diamonds is number two. So we've got the king of diamonds, but uh, king is, is 13. And two is, and diamonds is two. So 13 times two is 26, right? If you'd have said what, uh, spades, that would have been one. It would have been 13 times one, which is one. If you'd have said hearts, that would have been 13 times four. If you'd have said a different value, it would have been a completely different number. There's no way we could have known that we would have ended up with the number we've ended up with. But you ended up, but we've ended up with number 26. 13 times two is 26. And we've ended up with the king of diamonds. Is that fair? Yeah. King of diamonds... 26. Let me just open up these cards and let's just do this. So, 26. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Right there. 26 cards down. You said king. You said diamond. We could have ended up with any number, any card, and we ended up with the King of Diamonds. So there you go. Um, I think that's a much better way of doing this. What do you think? Because you've only got one deck. It feels more random. The nice thing about this trick, by the way, is it is very easy. It is the easiest A can I've ever seen. You literally just have to deal the cards down. Whether you do it his way or the way I suggest it, it's a very easy thing to do. Um, and it's an instant reset. You just put the cards away inside the box and it's reset. And if you choose to use um, this idea with, um, with the values of the uh, suits, you just put that away as well. Um, you don't have to use a wallet. You could just have them in your top pocket and just pull out the correct one. You could have, um, uh, you could have them in a Himber wallet. You could have them in a Himber envelope. Uh, but yeah, it's just an idea. I, I think that makes that a lot better because now you've only got one deck of cards and you're ready to go. Um, but yeah, okay, so in terms of reviewing the original trick, it's easy, it's self-working, it's an instant reset, it ticks a lot of boxes, but I just think that times two thing just kills it for me. I, I, just, I just think that makes it something that nobody would work. And the problem is that could have been easily overcome. I think that the person that's created this, Joseph B, I think he's rushed this out. I think he's had the idea, and it is a good idea. He's had the idea for the deck of cards, and he's gone, oh, how am I going to achieve this? Well, I'll get them to times by two. Oh, that's not the clean. I honestly don't think he's sitting there going, well, that's the cleanest way that I could come up with that. But I think it's just something he's rushed out. Well, let's get the download out. Let's make a few quid. I don't know. But, I mean, I sat there for half an hour, and I came up with that, which I think is a better way of doing it. And so I'm going to give this a good review because I really do like it. As an ACAN, I think it's really good. I've already done it in a Zoom show. I think I'll do it again. I really like it, especially with my little edition. So I'm giving it 87%. I think it's well worth buying. It's only like a 10 pound download. So it's well worth buying. It's well worth looking at. It's a very clever method, but I think the problem with it is, and this is a problem with a lot of the stuff that comes out, it's not finished. I think they could have worked on this a little bit more and made it a better product, but it is what it is. Um, I'm going to give it 87%. What about you? Um, 87. You can give it 87. You're not giving it 100%. I'm shocked. Okay, so it's 87% from him. It's 87% from me. It's really good. It's well worth getting. It's a very cheap download. How about 100 for me? You, it's up to you. Your choice. Yeah. 100% from him, 87% from me. It's well worth getting, but it's, uh, you know, I just wish they'd given it a bit more thought. Right, the second review is... Locked and Loaded. By? Uh, Ryan Schultz. Schultz. <laughs> Schultz. You're close enough. <laughs> right, Locked and Loaded by Ryan Schultz. It's a brand new app, and uh, we've got it pre-installed on my phone. It's absolutely brilliant. It allows you to make a prediction on the lock screen of your phone. You love this, haven't you? Yeah. I've literally not seen my phone since this has been, uh, since since we got this, it's great. You're gonna perform it? Yeah. Why don't you show everyone? Daddy? Yeah. 
I've got an invisible pack of cards. Okay, yeah, I can see them there. Yeah. Okay, now whenever you want to, just say stop. Stop. Look at the cards. Right, and did you just riffle force me with an invisible deck of cards? Yeah. Okay, look at the cards and remember it. Got it, yeah. Okay. Right, what was the cards? It was the three of clubs. Three of clubs. Okay. Now, I made a prediction on your phone. On the lock screen? Yeah. Right. And I changed it to a TARDIS. <laughs> look. It's a three of clubs. Can you see that? Does that show clearly in the camera, sir? Look at that, three of clubs. The nice thing about this, by the way, guys, and that was great, right, is it, it is the lock screen. I mean, they can't, it's not like, you know, it is the lock screen, or at least apparently it's the lock screen. It's so good. It really is. So that's that's locked and loaded. That's what it does. You know, I've, I've, I've got a kind of a minor obsession with magic apps, and there's been a lot of apps that I've seen in the past that has done a similar thing, but what they've done is they've, the, 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 uh, they've ended up with the prediction in like the camera roll of your phone or something. And that's never as good, because I've got so many pictures in my phone, and I take so many pictures all the time, that you end up with like millions of pictures, and it's like this one picture at the end. This is great, because it is literally that clean. It is literally that clean. It just goes straight into your, onto, your, uh, onto the lock screen of your phone. And it's this quick to set up. It's set up now. It, it's done, so you just put it down. Sarah, name a card? Ten of hearts. Ten of hearts. So my go, my go, we love this. Uh, so you just turn it round uh, and boom, it's that quick. There it is, the ten of hearts. Now, I've been playing around with this and I think there's more capabilities of this than they say, than they think. So, for example, I've been playing around with having the once the image is on there, and you can see it's absolutely on there, and it can't move around, and it is a genuine image. You can actually have someone else name a card. So, name a different card, Sarah. Queen of Diamonds. The Queen of Diamonds. So, what I've been playing around with is having the situation where you can uh, you can watch you just do this, and the card changes into the Queen of Diamonds on nice. the lock screen which is a really cool idea. So one of the things I've been playing around with this, with this Ryan, is having, having two people pick a card, right? And talking about the difference between mentalism and magic, and then kind of going into this thing where you say, well, mentalism, I made a prediction on my lock screen. Boom, was that your card? It was, yes, great. But you picked a card as well. What was the name of the card that you picked? Well, watch that image and just have that image change. I think it's great. Now, the other thing that I've played around with with this, which I think would work really well, let me show you this, um, would be to do almost like, oh, what's the name of that trick? I can't remember that. McComical Mac prediction. There's a routine in magic, right, right, called the McComical prediction, which is done a lot of the time on stage. And the whole idea is that you show somebody a card uh, and you tell you tell them that that's the card that you, that uh, that's that's your prediction. You show the audience, right? And you yeah. don't show the person that's helping you. So if you were helping me on stage, you wouldn't you wouldn't see this. I'd just show the audience. And let's say it's the Ace of Hearts. I would then say I'm going to get him to pick one of these cards. And you show all cards that are the Ace of Hearts. So you're, it's obvious that you're cheating. You pick one, and then you say hold on to it, and you go look. My prediction is the Ace of Hearts. Was, it, was that your card? And they go, no, what was the card? And it's the Queen of Diamonds. It's a, it's a classic routine. I'm sure a lot of you guys know it. I like the idea of doing the oh, comical yeah, prediction. Yeah, I like the idea of doing the comical prediction with this app. So, for example, uh, let me... So, you could have this set up, for example, with the Ace of Hearts. And so, you could show the audience that card. And you could say, right, that, and this would be a way of doing it close up. So you could say, this is, my, uh, this is my prediction, everyone. Hopefully you can see that prediction. Very good. And then, and then going into a situation where you say, look, I'll put the phone down on the table. And then get yourself a rough set of cards out. You'd only need like tw 10 cards, 20 cards rough together. And show them to, to the people you're doing this close up to. And they all look like the Ace of Hearts. But let's say it's got the Queen of Diamonds on the back of them. So they pick one and it's the Queen of Diamonds. Then when you pick it up and you've got it wrong, you can... Um, Go open it and, and the prediction on the phone has changed. That's another way you could do it. So I think there's a lot of possibilities with this. The download that comes with it is really cool. It's only like a 20 minute download. The other thing is you can set folders inside here. So you can literally predict anything. It doesn't just have to be a playing card. It can be literally anything. So you could have, for example, 
52 superheroes and you could pre you could you could you could do it so that they name a superhero and it's on the lock screen which is an amazing idea and it's kind of like the question then becomes how do you remember 52 superheroes well if you've got outstanding by mark oberon the technique he uses in there to be able to do that with no memory you could actually do the same thing here i'm not going to give that away look at outstanding by mark oberon but you could very very easily have someone think of a superhero in your case and immediately have it so that the superhero is on the lock screen. Or you could have someone think of, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the download, he talks about NFL teams, because he's American. So he talks about NFL teams, that's National Football League, it's like American football. And he predicts on the lock screen that he's got an image of the uh, of the football uh, the football team but yeah it's really good it's really good i really like this i think this is so super commercial i'm i love tricks where i can just carry it in my phone i don't need anything on me i'm good to go anytime anywhere i'm 100 percent going to do this which is why it's getting 100 percent off me what about you 100 100 120 120 percent you think it's that good yeah it's death. If you give it 100, I'll give it 120. Oh, is that how the rule works now, is it? Yeah, right, okay. but as long as it's Alakazam, even if you don't give it 100. You can't be biased to Alakazam. I'm going to give it 120. Oh, shut up. Right, anyway. And the Alakazam trick. <laughs> Not if I have anything to do with it. Right, okay. That is great. It's a really good trick. Locked and loaded. It's available on the App Store. I don't think it's available on Android. I think it's only available on Apple. Um, but, you know, if you haven't got an iPhone and you've got Android, that's your fault. Uh, but you can get it. You can get it right now. 100% uh, from me, 120% from him. Right, review number three. We have another mentalism routine by Luch. It's called Places. Uh, it's by his company, Read My Mind. And it's, uh, it's a mentalism routine using postcards. Now, there's a lot you can do with this. And we'll talk about this a little bit later on in the review. Um, but you know what? I, I, I'm just going to give it a quick performance, first of all. And then after giving a quick performance, we'll talk about it, okay? So, can we get the camera a bit closer, please? Yeah. Okay, Ryland, I've got a whole bunch of postcards, yeah? Yeah. And you can see, you know Barcelona, don't you? Yeah. Uh, there might be some here that you know. Do you know Detroit? No. That's in America. Uh, oh, look, man with no clothes on. Uh, that's Florence. Yeah, you don't need to see that. Uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, San Francisco. Yes. That's where me and Mommy got married. Um, United Arab Emirates. Yeah, we didn't. We got married in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. Sorry, but we went to... We've been to San Francisco. It's been a long day. Yes. Venice. You know, Venice. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to find ones you know. Do you know Japan? No. no, you don't know Japan. Um, Kingston? No, Jamaica? You heard of Jamaica? No. London. London. Yes. You know London, don't you? Yeah. Uh, Oslo? Do you know no. Oslo? No. no. How about New York? Yeah. There you go. You know New York. Paris? Yes. Uh, no. I think, no. Okay, fair enough. If you're here, you can examine the cards. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you and Mommy are going to work together. She's going to think of three separate places, okay? Yeah. She's looking confused. She's not got a great memory, has she? But she's going to think of three separate places. I'm going to have you cut. You're going to, uh, you're going to show mommy the, uh, the card you've cut to, and we'll do that three times, okay? Yeah. Um, I'm going to look away. It's important to, I don't see. Now, the first time, I want you to cut shallow, right? And cut about a third of the way down, maybe a little bit less, but cut a third of the way down. It's up to you where. Make sure mommy can see the picture, and when she can, yeah. uh, she'll tell you. Great. Now, square them up, right? So that... Uh, uh, they're all squared up. And this time, I want you to cut about halfway down, Rylan. So cut deeper than you cut to before. Uh, and yeah, got it. Yeah, you got it. Fantastic. Square them up again, Ryan. And we'll do this one more time. This time, Rylan, cut even deeper. Cut kind of maybe three quarters of the way down, somewhere near the bottom. And... Got it. You got it? Square them up for me. Wonderful. So we have a situation where in here, out of like... I don't know, 50 or 60 postcards. There's three that's mommy's thinking of. Now I'm going to try and read your mind, okay? You ready, Sarah? Yeah. Let's think of the first one. Uh, the first one that you looked at, concentrate on it. Concentrate on it. Have a think about it. In fact, what I want you to do is I want you to think of the type of food that you'd eat here. Because every country in the world has got different food. You go to, you know, places like America and it's quick, hot dogs then, and burgers. Like okay. See, well, that tells me an awful lot. Don't like it. Okay, so that tells me that you're thinking of Tokyo and you're thinking of sushi. Is that right? Correct. Boom. Let's go for the second one. The second one, I want you to think of it. In fact, is this somewhere you've been to? No. Okay, so what I want you to do is think of a monument that, that is there that, that would be yeah. recognisable. So if you thought of Paris, you'd think of the Eiffel Tower. It's not Paris, though, is it? No. Um, 
Okay, okay, that's very interesting. I think we've, I think I've got it. You were thinking, I got kind of a religious vibe off you for a second there. You're thinking of Christ the Redeemer, and you're thinking of Rio de Janeiro. Is that right? Correct. Let's think of the third one. Think of the third one. Oh, instantly it hit me. This is somewhere you've been to before, haven't you? Yes. This is somewhere you've been to before. You and I went here, didn't we? We did. Think of another monument that might be there. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, okay, you were thinking of the Sphinx. You were thinking of me getting stuck down a pyramid. I was thinking of pyramids. Yeah, yeah. me getting stuck down a pyramid, because that was very claustrophobic. And you were actually thinking, I did, I got stuck down a pyramid. You're thinking of Cairo, is that right? Yes. Boom, there you go. Mind reading 101. Okay, so that is an example of one of the routines that you can do with places. I should tell you right now, there's no live performances on the download of this. this I don't want you to look at this as a trick. This is more of a toolbox. You're supplied with, I think there's something like 52 uh, postcards. They're all specially printed and it allows you to do so much. Uh, now, the particular routine that I did there, you get, you, get, you get two stacks of postcards. And what I've done is I've put the two stacks together in here. Uh, and this is a really clever stack that allows you um, to force in a very clever way certain places but everything's kind of examinable and they can look through this uh, it doesn't feel like like a force does it right no. you don't just have to do the cut you can do it by having them touch a card you can do it by dribbling you know they talk about that um you can you can spread them out there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do this uh, but what i just did there is a way of forcing different places and everything's examinable however there's so many other principles that, uh, that you can do with this as well. Um, so that's using it as a four stack. You can actually use half of these cards and use it a little bit like a stack deck, a little bit like Mnemonica. So you can use this, any card routines that you do with something like Mnemonica, you can do with this very, very easily. So you could have somebody, for example, touch a card and they could take it out and you could tell them immediately what that card is because of the stack that's built in, because it's very, very clever. I can't really give too much away, but what you have here is a system that allows you to very, very easily remember 26 cards in the order in which they come up. However, you don't need to memorize them because these cards are also marked on this side in a very clever way. Even though you can't tell and there's nothing there, each one of these cards is marked. No, they, no they really are, they're marked. So, and, and what, uh, what Luch does on the download is he spends a lot of the time talking about uh, how he created it and he talks about how they had them printed. But then what he gets into, it doesn't, as I say, he doesn't do any tricks, but he talks about all the different ways that you can use the different principles that are built into this set of postcards. But the nice thing is they are gimmicked, they are marked. There is something very special about them in many, many different ways. He's combined several principles into this. But you know that r routine that you did last week from Alakazam, Destinations, yeah. where you had the 10 postcards? You could do that trick with this. You could take, you could have somebody take 20 cards out of here. And if you knew the destinations routine from Alakazam, you could do Alakazam's destination routine with these postcards. Mm -hmm. So you could use these postcards to do whatever you want to do with it. And then you could then go into the Alakazam routine and finish off with the Alakazam routine that you did last week. Like there's so many different things that you can do here. It would be very easy to develop a, a, a full set, a full working set just using these postcards. What do you think of it? I think it's very good. Oh, tell you as well, he has an idea of a tossed out deck with postcards. Mm -hmm. So you can take a couple of elastic bands and wrap them around like this. Pass me the other, uh, the other orange elastic band. So you can have, um, it's right there, right there, that's it. So you can have a couple of elastic bands wrapped around. You can have these cards examined. You can have them looked at. You can show them in great detail. And then you can you can throw them to people and have them look at them or, or, or pull that way. And you can you can do it as like a tossed out deck. There are so many different things that you can do with this. It is really clever. And yeah, they're marked. It's crazy, isn't it? So what do you think of it? Very good. Would you do it? Yeah. I know you've been doing that destinations a lot that you did last week. You did that on YouTube channel, didn't you? Yeah. You, like I say, you could combine that with this. What are you going to give it? I'm going to give this. Uh, my only concern, I, I was worried, is this a bit too big to carry around in the close-up gig? But I don't think it is, you know? I really don't think it is. Um, if you're doing tables, I wouldn't do this walk around, but if you're doing tables, uh, you know, I like doing stuff on tables that plays bigger. This is great. This plays great for big tables. It's also great for parlour. It'd be great for cabaret. Um, and it works really well on a Zoom show as well. There's lots of different stuff that you can do with this that works virtually. Um, I'm going to give this... 90%.
really good. Well, I'm not surprised. It's 100% from Ryland. It's 90% from me. It's really good. It's called it's called um, Places, and it's by Looch. Very highly recommended. Right. So the final review is an Alakazam product. Yeah. It's I know, right? It's called The Collector um, by Nicholas Mavresis. Now, Nicholas Mavresis is the guy that did the Zenatech, you know, with the yeah. ESP cards, the ESP Zena cards that we reviewed oh, for yeah, Alakazam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's uh, Nicholas. Did uh, that on my YouTube? He also did Destinations, did he? which you did on your YouTube channel. Now, uh, for those of you that have watched the trailer for this, and I, I encourage you to watch the trailer for this performance so you can see Peter's performance of it. Um, Ryland is obsessed with Alakazam and he loves learning and performing every Alakazam trick. I wanted him to perform you're this. Allowed, but you're not allowed to perform any Alakazam tricks. That's fair enough. Now, for the, for the purposes, and I'm sure you guys at home will understand, I, cha I didn't let Ryland see the download for this, uh, for this product and I've actually changed the presentation. Um, when I taught it him, we came up with a presentation together, didn't we? Yeah. And the presentation has been very seriously changed compared to what it's intended for, just because I don't think it's appropriate. Um, just put your fingers in your ears. Just put your fingers in your ears. There you go. I don't think it's appropriate for a seven-year-old to, to do... Um, I... Oh, he can hear this. <laughs> it was his birthday the other day. So I don't think it's appropriate for him to do routines based around what this is actually based around. So we've changed it. Anyway, you're going to perform it for us, aren't we, Ryan? Yeah. Go for it. Daddy? Not me, them. <laughs> oh, hang on. You need to get it closer. Oh, yeah. Come on, Mummy. You cheeky. Please. Come See on, how... cheeky, silly Mummy. You're going to be in so much trouble. Right, everybody. I'm going to show you a trick based in the 1800s. Okay, based in the 1800s, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's this criminal called the Collector. Okay. That's what the police call him. Okay. And the police are never able to catch him. Why is he called the Collector? Because every time he does something naughty, he collects something off someone. Okay, right. And the police really want to, like... Catch him. And they've not been able to? No. Okay. So they've got, they've took photos of 10 people. Okay. Yeah. And they've asked a magician to come into the police station and, and see if he knows who the criminal is. Okay. The magician's helping them. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, and the magician knows who it is straight away. Really? Yeah. And you're going to be that magician. Well, I am a magician. Okay. I'm very excited about this. Okay. Right. So... So, ten pictures, right, name a number between one to ten. Five. Fine. Show you what five. I want five, yes. Okay, take the cards. Okay. And count five cards. Like, one, yeah. two, three, four, five. And then look at that one. Jason. Jason. So, that's funny. Are they all Jason? No, look. They're not all Jason. You've got George... Thomas, Sonia, Sonia, Henry, Victoria, you've got Elizabeth, you've got Ophelia, you've got William and Benjamin. Okay, right, fair enough. Okay? Alright, so okay. So they're all different. Okay. And you picked Jason. I did, yeah. Yeah, and that and that's funny because the magician picked that. Really? And I'll prove it to you. So is that the bad guy? Yeah, I'll prove it the to The magician you. was right. Yes, please yeah. prove it to me. How do so, you know? So when the police went to his house... To Jason's house? Yeah. Okay. To Jason's house to arrest him, they found all the things that he stole. No way. Yeah, wait there, I'll just tip them out. Look, they found <coughs> the stolen clock. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, Mommy's just choking. <coughs> it's okay, don't worry. Nobody noticed. We'll just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got the clock that he stole, the key that he stole, the key to the jail so he could save his bad friends. Okay. The perfume, the ring, and the pipe. And oh, but that doesn't prove that it's him. Does no. It? it just proves it's just the things that he stole. Yes. But he wrote his initials on the back. Look, J. A. Ah. So. Oh, no, J. 
Dyson. Wow, that is brilliant. <laughs> I think we, before we talk about this, we need to just check the mummy's okay after that coffin fell. I mean, that's what happens when you smoke 40 cigarettes a day. <laughs> 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 right, okay. Um, first of all, that was a really good presentation. Second of all, like I said, guys, if you want to see um, the, the more macabre presentation that Alakazam suggests doing with this, check out the trailer. Um, I thought that that was great. I thought that, that, to be honest, that's an example of taking a trick and changing the presentation to fit your style. You love anything to do with bad guys, don't you? Yeah. I mean, he loves Lego City. He loves dressing up like a policeman. Um, you, you just love bad guys, you know, <laughs> um, which is good because your, your granddad was a policeman. But, yeah, my dad was a policeman. But, Actually a police sergeant. Anyway, but, anyway. Um, right, let me ask you a few questions about this because you're the one that just performed it. Is it difficult? Yeah. No, it's not. A bit. No, it's not. How is that difficult? You learned it within like 15 seconds. No, it's not. It's absolutely okay, ridiculous. Let's be honest. How? Let me ask you that question again. Is it difficult? No. It's really not. It's really not. How long did it take you to learn to do that? 10 seconds. Yeah, literally, I showed it him the concept and immediately he knew how it was. Um, what's the reset like? You just put them in the. You don't have to do it in front of everybody. Just it's it's like literally a, a. You just literally put these back in the envelope, and you literally just put this back in the stack, and you reset and ready to go. And it can be any number, and that's the beautiful thing. The principles I've se the principles that this routine uses, I have never seen before in all my years in magic. And I was completely fooled when I saw the performance of this. I had no idea how it was done. It just didn't make any sense to me because they genuinely can pick any number. They deal down to that number. There is no force of the number at all. They hold the cards. They deal down the cards. They can examine everything. Everything's examinable at the end. Everything's examinable at the beginning, in the middle. There's nothing to hide. And you can literally, to reset, you just put everything back in place, put it in your wallet and you're ready to go again. I've seen that there's collector's wallets that you can get where you can keep everything together. I just like the idea of just having this in my top pocket and I'm good to go. Um, I really like this. I like the plot. I like, you know, I talked uh, on this channel a little while ago about uh, story tricks and tricks that have stories in them. And I'm not a natural storyteller, but I can see myself doing that. I think that's a really cool story to tell. Um, yeah, so here's a question. What do you think of it? Good. I'm not gonna give I know you love Alakazam and you always give it a good review and that's fine. Where does it rank in your Alakazam favourites? You know, think about all the Alakazam tricks that you've done. You've done Executive Suite, you've done Destinations, mm. you've done Ocular, you've done your Las Vegas deck with the poker chip. You've done all these different decks. Where does Collectors rank? Is it up there or is it down? Where? where? Because you give everything 100%. Uh, is it all as good as each other or is the one because I know that the one that you seem to do more than anything else is the Las Vegas trick if somebody says to you hey do me a trick you like doing the Las Vegas thing with the poker chip but yeah. where where does this rank I, I would say the Las Vegas one is your favorite Alakazam trick <laughs> Probably. so where does this rank is this better than the uh, than, than the Vegas trick or not quite uh, as good to one to ten it'll probably be seven seven yeah Okay, so it's good, but uh, so it's, it's up there. Nothing's at one or two or three or four. Okay, okay. Well, well, here's the thing: you've not filmed anything for your YouTube channel next week. Will this be something that you film? Yes. Okay. What are you going to give it? A hundred and twenty. Hundred and twenty percent. You know, I can't wait till in maths in school they start talking to you about percentages. Have you started learning about percentages yet? Yeah. 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 Well, no, no, yet. Yeah, I don't know. Then the answer's no. But don't worry, when you start looking, <laughs> looking at your mom, she's just shaking her head at you and she's going, oh. I do it to, it's zero to 100, but I'm going over. I'm, I'm not giving a percentage. I'm going higher than a percentage. You're going to 120, I know you are, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm I think Sam goes higher than a percentage. Stop being biased. People are going to think you're biased and that Peter <laughs> Nardi's bribing you or something. Harry and Peter are sending you bribes. They're sending you Lego through the post to give them a good review. Actually, please do that that'd be amazing now i'm gonna give this 95 percent. i think it's really good he's giving 120 percent. it's another you know what i talk about alakazam a lot but the reason i do without being funny without making jokes about it is because right now 
Alakazam are hitting it out the park consistently with every single release. They don't have a bad product that ever comes out. Um, if there is one that comes out, I'll tell you about it. But right now, they're hitting out the park. 95% from me, 120% from him. It's amazing. And if you do darker magic, if you do shows where you can spend more time on the storyline and, you know, somebody like Tom Mullinger is a perfect example. My friend Tom does shows like that all the time. This is absolutely perfect for somebody like him. Um, it's great. Highly recommended. And that's another review show in the bag. The bag. <laughs> another review show in the bag. <laughs> Boom. Yes, it is another review show in the bag. Really great items today. I think that the... Uh, yeah, I think they're all good. I think they're all good. I think the standout for me is the mobile phone thing. Uh, but I really like collectors. I like all of them. I think it's really great. Um, highly recommend all of them. Anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching the show. We really appreciate it. If you want to see something specific reviewed, let us know down below. Um, stick around on the channel. We've got a Magic Live at 6 o'clock. Tomorrow is a rant. Saturday's a Honest Trailer. Sunday is a Q&A. And if you want to follow him, where did they go? To my YouTube channel. Which is The Kid Magician. The Kid Magician. You've got some really good stuff coming up on your YouTube channel soon, haven't you? Yeah. You've been working on different versions of Matrix. So check that out. And we'll see you again next week right here on Craig and Ryland's Magic Review. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. See you next week. Bye, everyone.